Halo teman-teman semua, selamat datang kembali di channel WPU bersama saya Sandika Gali dan kali ini kita lagi ada di acara apa aja Flink Forward Jakarta di uh, Tamrin. Kebetulan saya diundang ke sini untuk bertemu dengan orang-orang uh, yang sangat keren untuk membahas mengenai apa aja Flink. Bersama saya di sini ada Ben Gamble, dia adalah seorang field CTO dari Ververica dan juga kita ada di sini Sin Tong Song, dia adalah uh, engineer dari Alibaba Cloud. Dan juga release manager dari Flink 2.0. Ya, di sini nanti kita akan bahas mengenai apa sih itu apa sih Flink buat teman-teman yang penasaran. Oke, kita langsung mulai aja ngobrol-ngobrolnya. Hello guys, thank you very much for being able to come into my channel, YouTube channel. Thank you so much for having us. It's really nice to be here. Alright, so uh, in this time we are going to talk uh, about a patch of Flink. So before we start, I want to say that uh, my name is Sandika Gali. You can call me Sandika. I'm a lecturer in the university. I teach programming for uh, freshmen in uh, my campus. My campus in Bandung, uh, in Jakarta, uh, three hours ride from here. <laughs> Traffic allowing. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, I'm very excited to learn more about Avaja Flink, especially in the way that easy uh, to understand for my students. All right, for, uh, first thing first, I want to ask to Ben. Uh, Can you explain uh, about a feature flink and how it uh, is it uh, can help us you to deal with massive amount of data that are generated today? Okay, so the kind of reason. Uh, Apache Flink even came about was the idea of how to solve the next big data problem. That was what it came out of in a Berlin university of all places. Ah. And what it's really about is saying, once the data gets too big, you can't put it all on one machine anymore. There's just no way to do that. So it's instead, it kind of embraces the idea of moving data in and out of the machine. So you pull it in, you calculate something and you push it the results as you go along. Because you can't like, We start out in most data systems, you think, ah, oh, I'll do it on my local machine. I'll just run my query here, run my Python code there, all good, all done. But as soon as you get beyond a certain point, you have to accept that your data will not fit in RAM. Yeah. They'll have to go bigger. So what Flink does is it gives you the capability to stream data in, process the data, find your answer and stream it back out again. So by embracing these kind of uh, approaches to managing your data, there isn't really a limit anymore on how big your data can get you won't run out of headroom because yeah. you can just keep pulling it in and pushing it out again. Nice. So it's so uh, fascinating because uh, in my college, I learned about, uh, I teach my student about for simple data. Like we are, we are just using SQL in my yes. local machine and now we can stream that. Exactly. Many. And if you look at DuckDB or other simple databases, inside DuckDB, we're actually streaming again. Yeah, yeah. Because the problem is that once your data becomes even slightly too large for memory, you have to pull it in before you then press and then push out again. You can't hold all of it. It's the same reason of like, you know, imagine you're turning the pages on your book. Yeah, yeah. You, can't, you can't look at the whole page at once. So yeah. just treat, it treats the whole data like that, just keeps turning the pages. Nice. It's all fascinating. So yeah. uh, now I'm curious about what are some pages so like coolest feature? Uh, and how does those feature compare to other big data software like, uh, for example, Spark? Sure. So um, my one of my favorite use cases of Flink, and the reason I got into it was uh, matchmaking in video games. So I used to work in video games, and if you imagine you're trying to find the players to play against online, you need to have a team that are nearby you, so the latency is low enough, but you also need the same skill level, so you get a good game or a bad game. Yeah. So. Flink was really good for this because it could act in real time. So you pull all the players say, I want a match, I want a match, I want a match. And as that window of time goes by, I know that these number of people are looking for a match so I can make a safe match. There and balance. There. Exactly, a balanced and also quick match. So I don't want to wait for three hours of yeah. a perfect match. I want a good enough match. And we compare that to, let's say, Spark. The problem with Spark is it has to take a batch of things and then wait and do some work and then push it all out at once. It's not continuous. So it's not continuous, you end up waiting and waiting and waiting. And I'll tell you one thing, if you see gamers waiting, they're not happy. Yeah, so the problem is I'm a gamer also. I yes. play a game called Dota. Oh, so uh, yes. The higher the it's rank, a... <laughs> uh, the longer the waiting exactly. time on the match. Exactly, so I, I play Dota as well. Nice. And, and I got into this for matchmaking systems for other just similar games when I used to work at Microsoft. 
And this is exactly the problem. If you want to make a matchmaking in Dota and you're all the same MMR rating, right? You want to find a match evenly, not skewed. Yeah. So to try and make that like, even match, we've got to find the right people fast enough so you don't have to wait and lose all your time. Nice. So uh, thanks for explaining that. Yes. It's very cool. It sounds really powerful. Now, so in terms of the uh, application, mm -hmm. who can really benefit from using the Aperture Flink? And speaking of Indonesia, how is yes. Aperture Flink developing here? So, so I actually have a lot of personal experience of Apache Flink in Indonesia. So uh, my past roles, I have worked with banks like Bank Jago, who use Apache Flink directly right now uh, to do that kind of real-time updates to your mobile apps. Ah. The same with the GoTo group and so Grab and 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 uh, Gojek uses as well for the taxi apps. So every time you do one of those things where, or I think it's the blue one as well. So that that code they give you, that was password, that's gone through Apache Flink to go from both sides so they can verify that's the right number. When you get a payment through any of these payment platforms, they're all going through Apache Flink today. Oh, nice. In terms of uh, company, is there any uh, big companies that use Cisco Link except from the GoTo? So then... most of the GoTo group use Go Link. Right. Yeah, so Go, uh, Tokopedia do as well. Uh, Bank Jago do Bank definitely. Um, I've seen the <laughs> I've seen the clusters. Um, other than that, um, I know nothing. Lion Air use it as well. Um, so I've bit of my past. I used to build. I used to work a lot in the region. I had a startup based out of Singapore. We did a lot of work in Indonesia. Yeah, and then uh, my previous roles also. We worked quite heavily in Indonesia. Nice, it was a lovely tech scene. So uh, even though it's an open source, but it's yes. so, so powerful and exactly, and that's the big thing. It's the capability of brains is so important. That's been embraced worldwide. Yeah. So Uber and Netflix, all powered by Apache Flink, as well. Most of the banks, you know, use Apache Flink, yeah. not just the local ones. So it's really kind of taking the world by storm now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, so um, maybe for the uh, explanation, my student can learn about the implementation of yes. the Aperture Flink. And I recommend just like the big thing really is think about a use case. Like, there's two kind of approaches, which is a use case where you need the data now, as in the absolute now. So let's say the price of something, which changes dynamically, or the number of seats available on an airline. Those things change over time. Therefore, you don't want to try and book a like a, an airplane ticket when there's no seats left. You don't want to try and buy a concert ticket when it's going too fast and you can't get it. Or you, and you don't want to pay the wrong price. So anything right. like this, it really matters to have an answer which is correct to that second. That uh, flink becomes very useful. And on the other side, it's when you need when your when your data just keeps growing and growing and growing, and you need an answer continuously, like to what is uh, like how many uh, items have we bought today? These kind of challenges are difficult to answer without something like Flink, which can run continuously. Yeah. Because those are the services you probably have your students doing right now, where they run it once and it's done. Yeah. But as soon as you want to do that every day, you either have to run it on a cron job and it runs tick, tick, tick. Then you say, that's not good enough. And you go faster and faster and faster until you realize you really need the stream processing engine. Yeah, because in uh, in campus, we don't have a chance to uh, interact with that's so much big data. So there are some, one thing to note is there are some online sources of free data. So a classic one I always recommend people try is the Bitcoin price yeah. or crypto prices or like weather data. It's freely available online and you can just uh, accept a stream in and then start processing that. And that's data, it's quite big. Yeah, and it you is. You can play around you can get, with like, that. You can pull the whole Ethereum blockchain down if you yeah. want, if you've got a few hundred gigabytes lying yeah. around. <laughs> yeah. All right. So thank you very much. That might uh, make it more much clearer for yes. now. And then uh, now I want to ask Sin Tong about uh, for those who want to learn more about Apache Flink, uh, are there any communities or online forums where people can, especially beginners, can ask questions and discuss about Apache yeah, Flink? Yeah, 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 of course. And so Apache Flink itself is an open source uh, project. So we have an open source community and the, the major uh, community channel was like uh, the mailing list. We have a dev mailing list where developers are developing um, issues with uh, how to develop uh, Flink. And we also, we also have a user uh, development mailing list, which we, we can answer questions about using Flink. And you, if you run into any problems, you can ask help on, on there. 
And we also have a Slack channel. Slack channel. Uh, there's an right. Apache Flink Slack channel where you can you can do a more um, real time communication. Yeah. And I think there's also some uh, some people asking questions on uh, Stack Overflow. Yeah, but the, uh, embedded as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we also have people monitoring those uh, those channels to answer questions. Yeah. So, but but I think still the main channel is uh, the mailing list because that's how 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 the Apache Software Foundation works. Yeah. Okay. And how about the Indonesian communities? Have you heard about any Indonesian communities in? Well, um, I'm not familiar with this because I, don't speak, I only speak Chinese and English. But we do have some kind of uh, local, um, local language channels. For example, we have a mailing list for, for the Chinese uh, ch uh, communication. In the Slack channel? Yeah, oh. and the Slack channel, yes. And Slack channel, we can, we can create uh, channels for, local. For, for different uh, locals and different uh, languages. Yeah, but I'm not sure if there's an uh, Indonesian. If, Yes, uh, but definitely we can create one. Okay. Yeah. You've actually been looking into starting a meetup here. Yeah. Yeah, specifically for... Because Kibre. more and more people using the Apache. Uh, yes, thing. yeah. I think the local communities might have, must have the uh, bigger yeah. audience. <laughs> so. And then, uh, finally, that if uh, someone wants to learn about Apache Flink, uh, what do you think uh, the best way to learn? Uh, uh, in Aperture Flink, is there any recommendation or for learning path? Is there any some kind of uh, roadmap? What do we have to learn before we learn mm -hmm. Aperture Flink? Uh, Prerequisite for okay. learn. So I, I'd like to start with uh, what we need to learn before learning Aperture Flink. So basically, you need to understand the Java programming language. Java. Uh, you need to ne uh, understand the distributed system. Yes. Yeah, and maybe some some big data basics like the, the data analytics or something like that. But that's not that's not a must. And for learning Apache Flink, uh, it depends on what we learn it for. If you are learning for using Apache Flink, then I, I would suggest to start with a concrete uh, use case and to see if you want to achieve this use case, what uh, what needs to be done, and you you. You you will learn by doing it, and the learn, learning by doing it, and you are running into problems. Then you ask questions in the community, and you you, you get learned. This is, I think this is the best way. And of course, there's also some resources like courses and websites. Uh, you you can find a lot of them. The technical blogs. We also have the official, uh, the the project official website also have some some um, some walkthroughs. And we also have some some courses at Waverka and at Alabama Code that can be leveraged. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, I think that's the benefit of the open source communities. So it's like there's always a lot of uh, materials blind uh, that you can leverage. Yeah. So it means that it's very possible to uh, for a beginner to learn about Apache yes. Flink, right? Yes. All right. Okay. I think uh, thank you so much for you guys for answering my question. It's so uh, very insightful. I'm sure this will be incredibly helpful for my viewers, especially uh, in their study of uh, programming. Uh, and then I think thank you so much again. Uh, best of luck with the rest of Apache Flink Forward events. Thank you so much. Oke, okay, jadi teman-teman itu dia ngobrol-ngobrol singkat kita dari teman-teman kita di Apache Flink. Mudah-mudahan bisa menjadi insight yang menarik buat teman-teman semua untuk belajar uh, Apache Flink. Sampai ketemu lagi di event berikutnya. Saya Sandi Gagali pamit dan seperti biasa teman-teman jangan lupa titik kom.